Okay, so this third page, it says radius chord relationships. So we'll understand again what a radius is. That's one that we one of the ones we should have been familiar with yesterday. It starts at the center of your circle and extends out to your circle. That's your radius. So when we talk radius chord relationships, that's obviously one part of that. And then the idea of a chord, this is our chord. The two endpoints are on the circle and then they connect to each other. So radius, chord. And then obviously they have some relationships that we'll talk about. First one being that the distance from the center of a circle to a chord is the measure of the perpendicular segment from the center to the chord, all right? Then you have this little theorem. It says if a radius or part of a radius is perpendicular to a chord. So the black line is our radius. The red line is our chord. Notice how the radius is perpendicular. We have this 90 degree angle symbol here. So that satisfies this. Then it bisects the chord. So if you ever have a radius that forms a 90 degree angle with this chord, then that chord is getting bisected. So what that would then mean, you don't necessarily need to add these numbers, but if this is bisecting, that means this is a midpoint. So let's say this was six, then this would also have to be six. The chord gets cut right in half if the radius and chord are perpendicular to each other. Okay. What that means as a symbol, segment AD, so from here to here, or segment AE, we could name that either way, is perpendicular to BC. So what that means is those two segments that I just said could be six, so here and here. That would then have to mean that C. E, that segment, has to be congruent to E, B. And I like kind of just showing numbers initially because that probably makes the most sense. This is us just using the notations. This segment would have to be congruent to this segment. Before we go to the next one, let me kind of show this. What this precondition is, is this, that if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then we know it bisects the chord. All right, we got that. If we go to the next one, this hopefully would make some sense. Now watch what I'm going to do. It says if a radius bisects a chord, isn't that the same thing that the second part of this one up here says? Then... It is perpendicular to the chord, isn't what this first one here is saying. So it's really just those guys flipped around. One implies the other. Okay. So if we look at this one, if you see that this segment here is congruent to this segment, notice how the rate this guy right here from the center of the circle is bisecting that. That guarantees then that it is perpendicular to the chord. So we know then that that has to be a 90 degree angle. So we would say angle AEC, or I'm sorry, not an angle. We want a segment because they're going to be perpendicular. So segment AE, and then you see the perpendicular symbol. So that segment AE is perpendicular to the segment C. So if we know that the chord got bisected, that means we know we have perpendicular lines. Okay. All right, next theorem. The perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center of a circle. All right, so the perpendicular bisector of a chord. So remember what this is, perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center of a circle. All right, so kind of now look at this problem here. It says a circle O, so that's just because we have the center as O, is the center of the circle. You were then told that AO is five, so we know that length is going to be a five. And we know that DB is a two. And then we want you to find the length of OC, OD, and CD. One of those should be pretty, actually two of those should be pretty quick and simple. See, here are the two that I think we should be able to find pretty quickly. OD, I would think, would be pretty nice. And OC would be pretty nice. There's not a lot of work to find those two. CD is the one we're going to have to do a little bit of work for. So go ahead and write down what we think OC and OD are. All right, 
Anybody have OC or OD? Cam, which one? OD must be three. Good. OD must be three. And how'd you know that? Good. If this is going through the center of the circle, right? So it's going right through here. This is a radius. Isn't the radius five anywhere around the circle? So from here to here must also be five. And if we already had two of it, this remaining length has to be three. So that has to be three. So what was that? OD. So OD is three. Anybody get OC? Okay. Uh, I bet. Yeah, because that's a what of the circle? Yeah, this is a radius too, right? Like from the center of the circle out to the circle, no matter where I draw that in, the radius is always the same. So that has to be five also. Okay. So those there's no work really. But then we get to CD. So that's got to be this guy right here. Anybody know how we can find this? Definitely an old idea, nothing new. We've been doing it. You did it this year. You did it in math one. You did it in junior high. Good. This is a right triangle. Notice how we have two of the three sides. So CD, we can do the Pythagorean theorem for. Remember, C is always your hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle. So here is this right angle. So the five is the hypotenuse. So the five must go right there. And then the three, you can make A or B, and then we solve for the other. Three squared is a nine, plus your B squared, which is 25. And then just continue to solve. This gives you a nice number. B squared is 16. What does B equal? Four. four. You would get plus minus four. So when we take our square root, always remember you get a positive and a negative solution to those equations. We did that a long time ago. But since we're, yeah, good. And since we're looking for the length of a circle, and okay, yeah, that's a good way to think of it too. He said it's got to be the positive one because it's got to be between three and five. That's a way to think of it. We're also looking for the length of something. You can't have a negative length. So then we would just worry about the positive four. All right, so then this is positive four. All right. That wasn't hard, right, Cam, with numbers there? That was easy. Yeah, it was easy. Not only was it not hard, Cam said it was easy. So, so far, so good. All right, number two. It is given to you that AB is 12. So we know that full chord is 12. So this whole thing here, 12 units long. The radius of circle O is 10. And then this question is asking you, how far is the chord from the center or from the center of your circle? So here is the chord, and it's asking how far away from this segment is the center of the circle. When this question gets asks, gets asked. When we ask how far away, uh, we want to understand it is the most direct route or distance. So what I mean by that is here's the center, here's our chord. We really could connect the chord to the radius in a bunch of different ways, right? But aren't these red lines a different length? Some of those red lines are longer than others, some are shorter. So the one that we focus on when you're asking how far is a chord from the center is the one that's the most closest. Can you say most closest? Is that a thing? Whichever one is most close or the closest. So when we look at this, the way you get directly to a chord is at a 90 degree angle. So as best you can, we want to draw, we don't want to draw a radius in down here. That doesn't make any sense. We want to draw a radius in so that it would be perpendicular to this chord. So as best you can, wherever you think that's going to be, I'm going to say it's right about here. I'm going to create this 90 degree angle. That's what we're looking for. So this is kind of our X now. That's what we're trying to find is that length right here because that's the distance from the chord to the center. Notice how when I did that, I create this 90 degree angle. If we revisit the previous page in these theorems, if a radius 
is perpendicular to a chord. Didn't we just draw that in? We made our radius perpendicular to our chord. Then it bisects the chord. So if we go back to that problem, if the chord originally had a length of 12 and it just got bisected, good. We now, instead of one big 12, we can say that each of those is six here, and then we have a six right here. Radius to a chord, if it's perpendicular, will bisect that chord. So that's a nice start. That's something we can use. We still want this guy right here. Wasn't the right triangle here nice? Because once we have a right triangle, we actually have a lot of ways we can solve right triangles right now. So this right triangle is good because you can use the Pythagorean theorem. We could also throw some of those the Sokotoa stuff around. So wouldn't it be nice if we had a right triangle here? Because then we could use the Pythagorean theorem again. We have the right angle. Is there any way we can create a right triangle here so that we can use the Pythagorean theorem possibly again? Nobody will be feeling clever. Gavin, what do you think, Gavin? Good. Gavin says connect O to B. And wouldn't that be a 10 as well because of this statement right here? Your radius of that circle is 10. So when we connect that from O to B, like Gavin said, we then know, as Ahmed said, that's got to be 10. Don't we now have this right triangle right here? And then don't we know two of the three sides? So now that the Pythagorean theorem's in play again, we can go ahead and set that up, solve it, whatever that gives us, should be this length right here, which is the length we're looking for from the center to the core. All right. Solve that. That should also be a nice number if you do it correctly. If you get an ugly number, then you did something incorrectly. All right, what do we get here? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah we should get eight. Ten has to be your pipe hypotenuse because that's opposite of the right angle. And then you should have six squared plus X squared equals your 10 squared. So 36 and 100, when we square those, subtract that 36 over from the 100 and you get a 64. The square root of that should give you a positive and a negative eight. Since we're looking for a distance, we don't have to worry about the negative eight. This has to be a positive eight, all right? Okay, do number three. I'll give you a minute. No prompts. Third one, pretty similar type of a problem. See if we can get this. Okay, give me about 30 more seconds here. Okay.
let's see where we're at. Let's mark some things, see if you're on the right track, and then we'll see if uh, you know, somebody walk us through the actual work of this. So as we read through the problem, it says the chords. So that's why we do all the vocabulary yesterday. We need to know what this reference is. The chord shown is 15. There's only one chord shown in this graph. So we need to know what a chord is so that we can label it correctly. And that is, late, that is 15 units from the center. So this is the chord. That thing is 15 units from the center. And when we start talking about that, we mean at a 90 degree angle, the most direct route from the chord to the center. That's what we're talking about with the length. So that chord being 15 units from the center is this distance right here. So this should have been our 15. You are then told that the radius is 17. Do we have a radius drawn in yet? No, but no matter where you draw it in, if I go here or here or here, anywhere I want, we know these are all 17s. It doesn't make any sense to do it down here, but no matter where we draw it in, it would be a 17. So did you do something similar here, Gavin? Yes. What did you do? Okay, so he drew in his radius from O to A. O to B would work exactly the same. So if he went from O to B, also fine. And then don't we now know that length is a 17? What we're ultimately looking for is the length of the chord. So it's this blue highlighted segment. So while we're not going to be able to answer that immediately, our theorem that we referenced now in those previous two questions, if I have a chord and a radius that are perpendicular to each other, then this chord gets cut in half. So if I now figure out what this length is here, like let's say this ends up being a 10, which it's not. If that's the midpoint, doesn't this also have to be 10? And we would just add those two things up, say that it's 20. Yeah, so that's our goal. So just worry about the one triangle over here. It's a Pythagorean theorem question again. I'm going to let this here be the x. And that'll be half the chord. And then we would just need to double that value. All right, so we should have. Make sure the 17 is your hypotenuse. So that has to be the c term. Oh, boy, I don't know what these are, but I know the answer. What's 17? 349? 289. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and then this should be 64. And this ends up being a nice answer, correct? At least this isn't the answer, but X ends up being a nice number. We don't have to worry about the negative 8 with these. Should have been 8. Once we know this is 8, what do we know the whole chord has to be? 60 because from here to here would also have to be eight. So the length of the chord is 16, okay? So some good thinking there. Thinking is good. Uh, number four, one of these I wanna skip. It's the next one, it's the next one. So number four, no picture at all now. So now another notch of thinking. So see if you could do this one without us doing it together yet. So the radius of a circle is 13 millimeters. The length of chord PQ is 10 millimeters. Find the distance from O to PQ. So see if we can put all of that together. <laughs> I'll have to get you guys the compasses out. I probably got them in here from Math 1. You remember those days, right, Cam? Although I think the computer allows me to draw a circle if I want. I'm going to test it right now. Look at that. It's totally freehand right there. <laughs> Forgot about that. I'm going to have to use that. Yeah, ink to shape. I don't need it to be shaded, but it'll work.
All right, let's see if you have the right shape. If you're confident and you're still not, if you haven't finished solving yet, let's continue on. You're told the radius of a circle. In this case, it's a circle O. So we'll call that O is 13 millimeters. I'm going to wait to draw that in. The important thing here is, is drawing in your chord PQ. You can draw it anywhere you want. It really doesn't matter. Since we just did one where it's drawn in straight across the top, if we want to just kind of you know have a common look to these, you could do that again and just go straight across the top. It doesn't have to be here though. But just so it kind of looks like that previous one, that's our chord. One of them is a P, one of them is a Q, and then we know this is 10 meters or millimeters. Now, like Gavin has told us a couple of times, if I know the radius is a 13, doesn't I'm going to go the other way in this case. I'm going to make this 13. And then isn't the question now just asking us find the distance from O to PQ. So it is looking for this right here. That's our S. Yeah, Kim? Um, so for the answer, we may get a good number. Is it okay to get my decimals? Uh, I think you do get a good number, though, is the problem. It is okay to get decimals. So to answer that question, you can get bad numbers. However, this is a good number. This is what we're looking for, right? Yeah. So it's another Pythagorean theorem question. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So let me go in the order in which hopefully you have these. What was your C? Good. This is one of them, right? Either the A or the B. Yeah. So I had that your B. So here, here is where my guess is something went astray. So now rethink. Here is this triangle. So isn't this x, this 13, what is the length of this side right here? Right. This needs to be 5 squared, not the 10 squared. Then from then, this is 13 squared. Now we should get that good number. All right, so we get x squared equals 144. Now when I do the square root of that, if you got 12, that's pretty good. Okay, look at that. All right, so that's those problems. Um, you're given some graphs. Be able to do it without a graph. As long as you understand your vocabulary, those should be fine. We're going to skip five. I don't think I'm going to go there with you um, right now. So go to the next one. We get another theorem. If two chords are equidistant from the center of a circle. So here are your two chords. Here is one of the chords. Here is the other chord. They are equidistant from the center. Here is the center of our circle. So what that is saying in terms of numbers, don't add this, but these are the same lengths. So from here to here might be six. From here to here are the six. That's what equidistant means. They are the same distance away from the center. What that then guarantees is that they're congruent. They have to be congruent. So the two blue line segments are congruent to each other. They have the same exact length. All right. Good with that. All right. Then what they're saying is prove it. All right. So if we were to ask you to prove that, um, actually, I don't know if I do want you to prove that. Let's do it with numbers. Let's say this is six. Well, let's just do it with markings. All right, so go here. OX is perpendicular to AB. So OX is perpendicular to AB. And then OY is perpendicular to CD. OX is congruent to OY. So then OX is congruent to OY. So remember, I don't think we can prove this with what we know. Um, so the next thing, what we what we know then is that if this is perpendicular, which you know, isn't this a midpoint? Wouldn't that then mean this segment has to be congruent to that segment? And then as we've done with every single problem so far, meaning we probably want to do this as a common thought in a lot of these problems, let's create a right triangle here. Isn't this the radius of our circle from the center to the circle? 
well, if I connect this right here, isn't that also the radius? Isn't the radius going to be the same no matter where we draw it in? So aren't all three of these sides congruent? Yeah. So there, there's stuff that we have skipped a little bit, but one of them is side, side, side in terms of proving that triangles are congruent. If all three of those sides are congruent and they're all 90 degree angles, then those triangles have to be congruent to each other. That's similarity, but that is also, there is, so there's, we do these. Do we do these in that one? I'm trying to remember. Does that sound familiar? Have you done side, 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 side angle, side stuff? I don't remember. But if all three sides are congruent, why don't we agree that the triangles are congruent? It's probably the easiest route to take right now. Okay. All right, next one. If two chords are congruent, then they are equidistant from the center. All I did is flip those around again. So if we know that AB is congruent to DC, those two chords are congruent, that guarantees that their distance to the center of the circle is the same. It's just basically the converse of the previous theorem. All right, so in this case, we would say that OX is congruent to OY. All right, and I think there's this problem or two. Okay, good. Last one. So with that, it says, given that segment AB is congruent to CD. So AB, so from here to here, is congruent to CD. So we have two chords. That's what those are. Two chords that are congruent in the circle O. And then you're told that OP, and finally we have variables. OP is 12x minus 5, and OQ is 4x plus 19. Find the length of OP. So do that. The only problem of these, I think, right? Yeah. The answer's on the board. If you finish and you want to see if you did it correctly. If not, when I do it here in one minute, just kind of follow along and see where you may have gone wrong. Get a can. Yeah. Is that a three or is that a 31? 31. 31. 31. 31, yep. Right, Ella? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I'm going to you, Ella, so you better know this here. I'm like, oh, you know it. Oh, oh okay, I see it. I see it. Yeah, we did the same thing, Cam. I see it. Okay. Okay, Ella, you ready? <laughs> All right, what did you just start, Ella? Um, 12x minus 5 plus 4x plus my A equals Oh, did you get 3? Did you get x yeah. 3? Well, then you said that you got 31, so I'm going to do Do what you did to get 3. Oh, equal. So you set these equals. Yeah. Okay, so let's go with that. Let me not lead you too far astray. So our theorem says this. If two chords are congruent, so if two chords are congruent, and that's what you were given here, the blue chords are congruent to each other, that's what we stated right at the beginning, then they are equidistant from the center. So that guaranteed that OP to OQ are equal to each other. They have the same lengths. So that's why Ella set those up. We're going to go through and solve this. 8x minus a 5 equals a 19. You're going to grab 5 over, add it. And then what does x equal, Ella? 3. 3. And that's not our answer because we're looking for this, right, Ella? 
So then you're going to do what to get OP? Oh, you plug it in. Right. <laughs> we need to take the 3, plug it in for 12, and then instead of x minus a 5, now that we know that x is a 3, you plug that in, evaluate it, and you should get the 31. Almost got you. Yeah. 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 31. 31. So it's good. You guys did it right. Uh, but it's just one of those things, again, like on a multiple choice, three would definitely have been an answer to pick. So we just want to make sure we know like what the question is asking. Always answer that question. Okay, We would want that guy. All right, so with that, we are now done with that section. So now you can have some homework on this. So you're not spared tonight. So it, it's posted. I put it up here just before class. So this is tomorrow's date. We are on 7.1. Right, you can find it underneath the assignments. Okay, So get that done for tomorrow. If you have any questions, is this the next two pages? If we look at the notes, at least if you have your packet. Wait, oh, I don't have any mix of it. Yeah, I think it is. Was it just one page? Yeah, one through nine on the next page. I don't have the packet pulled up. I do have the, there it is, yeah, one through, yeah, one through nine, one through nine. All right, okay, at home, if you have any questions, stick around. If not, you guys can go. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.